Hi there guys, hope you are doing well. This is Oz, I'm a guitar instructor and I've been teaching guitar for more than 20 years. In this video, I will talk about the most common mistakes and the most important elements of picking technique. So this video will be my most detailed picking lesson video. So watch whole video. But if you want to skip all the most important details, you can jump end of the video to check the exercises. But if you do that, you will keep doing the same mistakes. So please watch whole video guys this video will be my best picking lesson video so please help me to beat the youtube algorithm like comment and share so we did that on four week program to master alternate picking i hope we can do it again so thanks a lot guys let's get started in this video i'm gonna show you some examples from the best guitar players in the world and then i will start summarizing and show you all the most important elements for picking technique but before that I just want to talk about the most common mistake about picking is minimizing the movements or using shortcuts. So I'm getting tons of messages like Momstein using his fingers, uh, Jason Becker using his fingers for economic picking or pick slanting, Paul Gilbert not using his arm, blah, blah, blah. But these guys are guitar gods and they were playing as good as today when they were 15 or 16 years old. So we have to accept that we are normal human beings and we have to learn uh, and improve our skills step by step because learning it's all about that. When you minimize your movements I think we are not sounding great and we are starting to make fundamental mistakes. So I'm gonna show you uh, Rick Graham's video which he is like one of the best economic picking player in the world I believe. So let's watch the video and then we will talk. So, as you can see, he is destroying the strings. He is playing economic picking, but it's not like the way you are thinking. He is not minimizing his movements. He is destroying the strings. And, as you can see, he is moving his arm to change strings. Even he play economic picking, or even he plays like in two strings on high E and B strings. Okay, now we are going to check Guthrie Gowen's iconic fives performance. As you can see, he is using his wrist for picking. He is using his arm for changing strings. And for some points, when he use economic picking, he is using thumb for pick slanting and getting faster. Now let's check John Petrucci's chromatic exercise. Again, as you can see, he is using his arm for changing strings. He is not using his thumb, he is picking from the wrist. Now let's check Aldemiola's alternate picking. This is amazing example for picking technique. He is using his arm for changing strings and he is using the wrist for picking. So if we're talking about picking technique, we cannot skip Paul Gilbert and let's check his picking performance. So even he has like giant hand, he is also using his wrist and he is using his arm for changing strings. 
but in some points he don't need to use his arm because as I mentioned before his hand is too big and he don't need that he can do everything from the wrist. Okay, so let's check Mamsin performance now. Uh, most of the people thinking like he is just using his fingers for picking, but you're gonna see that he is using his wrist for picking too. What you can do? Nice. Yeah, such a legend. Uh, of course, he is using his arm, wrist, and finger for economy, and this is very common for economy picking players. And last, I want to show you Martin Miller's The Glass Prison Alternate Picking Performance. Another amazing performance. If you look at carefully, you will see that he is using whole arm, elbow, wrist, and fingers for picking and you will see that he is using his shoulder too so whole mechanism is working and which is great i think we analyzed enough amazing guitarists so now let's talk about all the most important elements about picking technique so first element and the most important element i believe is wrist if you are picking from the arm just arm and you are feeling stiff you have to use your wrist for picking and as you can see, all the best guitar players using the wrist for picking. If I summarize quickly, your pick has to have 10 to 30 degrees angle with the string. You can get a pick angle like that, or you can get a pick angle like that. So as I know, Ola Eglund using the pick like this, which is not common, but again, if it works for you, you can do it, but I highly recommend you using a pick looking in this direction. That will make you slide on the strings and sound better. Because if you have parallel angle with the string, your pick will stuck. And you're gonna get some sound like that. Which is not pleasant, I believe. So. When you use some angle, your pick will start to slide and you're gonna get great sound. So you can listen to your sound and decide which angle is best for you. And also when you have too much angle with the string, you're gonna get some squeaky sound. Also, you can understand by listening yourself. So I'm gonna give you parallel, some nice angle, extra, let's say too much angle. So you get this squeaky sound. So about your peak location, I advise you to check with your palm eating playing and this location will be the best for your picking. So, so my pick close to the middle pickup. You wanna get some different sounds, like for country sound, you can go back. For getting more mellow, like jazzy sound, you can go forward. But let's say the best uh, location is close to the middle pickup and if you have a big hand or, you know, it will change the location. If you have a small hand, your location will change. But check your palm muting playing and find your position. And we're going to play palm mutings and the open notes together. So let's say if we play Fatal Tragedy from John Petrucci and from Dream Theater, we have like palm muted notes and the open notes. Yeah, so you have to stay at that position to get a nice palm muted sound and open sound. Another important thing about wrist movement, so you need some angle with the wrist. So instead of using your arm on the guitar like that, you stay away from the guitar a little bit and you curve your wrist. And that will give you consistent picking because if you do that, you're gonna get this kind of curve. And in pick slanting, you can do that, but you have to start with the same angle and keep doing that for every strings. Later on, you can work on the pick slanting. About the pick angle, the pick can look up or can look down. I mean, there are guitarists using both way, but I advise you when you ascend, use the pick looking up, like sweep picking technique. And you can use the reverse for descending, your pick can look down. But first, try to get this angle, so your pick has to look up and go in and out for picking like that. Okay, so the second most important element for picking 
is arm. So once you're down using your arm and wrist, you're gonna fix your picking technique, let's say 90%. As we watch all the great players, we are seeing that they're using their arm for changing strings. And your arm shouldn't lay on the guitar like that. You can get a pivot point from this part. You can put your arm here, but the arm has to slide, not stable. If you're stable, you will be stiff and you won't get faster or you won't get a proper technique. And as we see Martin Miller technique, he was using his shoulder arm too. So the common mistake about using arm, once we come to the high strings, we forget low E or A string open and you get harmonics and it sounds dirty. So let's say. So what I have to do, your wrist can look down a little bit and you will be able to cover lower strings. So uh, before jumping the third element, I just want to talk about the fingering hand. The index finger is the most important element for fingering hand. So with the tip of your index finger, you have to mute the lower string, one lower string, let's say. So when I play G, I am covering D with the tip of my index finger and at the same time with my index finger, I am covering all the higher strings. And you improve that technique with legato. So you can practice some legato. But at the same time, when you practice some palm muting songs or rhythm guitar, it's same. Let's say I'm playing D5, but with the tip of my index finger, I'm muting low E. If I don't do that, I'm gonna get this. Even you don't hit that string, that string will vibrate and will give you dirty sound, let's say. Instead of that, I have to cover low E string. And when I'm hitting everything, I don't get sound from the other strings because my index finger covering everything. So wrist and arm are the most important elements for picking technique. So now, Let's talk about third elements. I call them elements because I think they are all connected. Yes, we talked about the shoulder. You can use your shoulder for helping the arm and wrist. You can use pick slanting and using different angles. But I think accenting is another most important element. So you have to get that dynamic. First, I learned that from Mr. John Petrucci. He was talking about accenting to stay with the metronome but later on i understand that accenting actually uh, losing your arm and add you a lot of stamina because with the first attack you are hitting very heavy and then for the other three notes or for the other five notes if you play 16 notes you accent for the first like i hit hard for the first note and then i recover like with the soft touch and I stay in stamina. So if you want to improve the accenting technique, you can practice a lot of palm muting songs from Metallica, like Creeping Dead, Master of Puppets, True Do Never kind of songs, and it will teach you the movement. Because we usually don't raise the wrist like a slapping. And once you play these songs, you need that to chug uh, and to get a nice sound. If I play like this, but as you can see, I'm like raising my wrist, accenting. And first thing about accenting, you have to raise your wrist a little bit and you can get some help from the arm, but a little. It will really add you some speed. And the second thing is landing on the next string and which you can improve that technique with sweep picking. So in sweep picking, we always land to the next string. And for accents, I'm hitting hard and I am landing on the next string. So. So here, maybe for the other notes to get quiet notes, not quite actually, but to save your stamina, you can get some softer touch. And this is very key 
to improve your speed and get a better technique. So I have a video how to play fast with alternate picking technique. You can check this video. I have a lot of examples in that video. Okay, now I will give you some exercises. Let's get started. So first exercise is an exercise that I shared with my patrons last year or something like that. So it's a simple chromatic exercise and to get the best muscle memory, you have to start very slow and use every detail step by step, which is not easy because you have to check 10 different things at the same time. And while you are playing fast, it's not possible. So instead of focusing speed, you have to focus on the technique. <music> So this is Aldemiola's Patient Grace and Fire, uh, which is an amazing alternate picking exercise. Use your arm for changing string, use your wrist for picking. Okay, let's check the third exercise. So this is four week program to master alternate picking, uh, third week exercises. There are a lot of string skippings, so you can slant your pick, which is normal once you get high tempos. But with the slow tempos, you can keep your technique stable. Actually, the exercise itself will teach you how to pick. And let's check the last exercise. <laughs>
this is Metropolis part one unison. I love this exercise. It's great for six tuplets. So don't forget the accent, the first notes of the six note groupings and try to get faster. The origin speed of this exercise, as I remember, is 132. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Again, if you enjoy my videos, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell button next to it and turn on all the notifications. If you want to support my channel, you can join my Patreon page. And I hope to see you on my upcoming videos, guys. Cheers. Bye.